Hey there, Builder Blog. Captain Zach Sparrow here with Scorpios. We're getting ready for the Destructathon. We are heading there next week to fight Slamo. And yes, for a special treat for the Builder Blog, normally the Destructathon fights are only given to the BattleBot supporters, but Greg has allowed us to record the Scorpios fight, and we will be putting it here on the Builder Blog. Um, but the supporters will get it first. They will get it a week before the Builder Blog. However, this week, we're following Rick Russ as he brings two new battle bots to the Destructathon, Swamp Thing and Hellfire. We actually have its very first spin-up test here in this week's video. So a big thank you to Andy Sorrow for tagging along with Rick and Shay from the Triton team for getting all the footage down at the Destructathon. So let's see if we can get an idea of what Scorpios and the team are in for next week as we travel along with Rick and his two new battle bots. Welcome to the bot shop. My name is Rick Russ. I'm the designer and builder of Swamp Day. This thing will go 21 miles an hour and it has a lot of power. Spinner is an asymmetrical tube, 3 8 inches stick, it's AR500. It's powered by a modified ME0708 motor, which puts roughly 20 to 25 horsepower into the tube. Nothing will stop it. It will not stop, it will keep going. It should be uh, extremely impressive. Okay. One of my latest acquisitions was this uh, Diacro four foot press brake, which has uh, really helped a lot as far as building the battery boxes and everything else. And then I had bought the hydraulic saw. I've got a uh, an Art Star uh, plasma system. It's uh, it cuts 50 inches by 50 inches in its travel. It's got a hypotherm 45. I cut the uh, the plates, the wedges for a swamp thing on that. Base base on uh, Hellfire. The bases are cut on that. All of the uh, the inner panels. The space for the motor. Um, everything that is plate steel in here was cut on the arc saw. I machined the shaft over here on the sled. It's a 16 by 40. Um, it's big enough to do that shaft. That that shaft was a monster. Getting it up into the chuck and stuff by myself was kind of <laughs> The uh, machining for the gearboxes was all done over here on this little CNC. It's uh, not a big one, but it's enough to, to machine gearboxes. Yeah, and other parts that we need. All right, Rick, show us this beauty on the inside. Okay, we're going to pull these covers. This is Hellfire, ladies and gentlemen. Hellfire has the Castle 2028 with the XLX2 controllers, okay? This is a modular gearbox that I designed and we're using a two-stage gearbox to get it to the right RPM. It's putting out 1550 on the, on the uh, spindle. And then we're going down to the drive wheels via chain. In order to compress everything in, we had to go with the U-joint. It seems to work extremely well. It's pretty robust. Um, uh, I pretty happy with the drive. Now, the ME0708 modified is, is a motor that I designed for Tombstone. I shortened it by inch and a quarter. It's uh, the same ME0708 power-wise. We're running at 60 volts. And we only use a 
on off relay we don't use any uh, speed controls on this motor we haven't found anything that was actually robust enough to stand up to the motor at what we're doing with it these uh, battery boxes I'm using the uh, race pal 8200 eight cell batteries I run uh, two batteries in series and then another two batteries in series and parallel them for the weapon system. So the weapon system's running 16.4K at, at uh, 60 volts. Now, what we've done here is we've gone in and we built this unit here for the drive battery. Drive battery sits in here. It's a six cell light bulb. That powers, that powers our drives. This, uh, this piece goes right back in here and bolts back down. Okay, your weapon and drive switches are right here. There are covers for the batteries. The, uh, the weapon itself is powered with a, the ME0708 using a number 50 chain. I don't like using belts because they break and they slip. And when you're powering a weapon this big, you've got to have a chain. We need instant power and we need to power right on through our opponents. Now, you said that this is a modified motor. How many horsepower is this thing putting out? 20. 20 horsepower. 20 horsepower. And you Between said? 20 and 25. You said that this blade is spinning at the, uh, the maximum speed limit, right? We're at just under 250 mile an hour tip speed and uh, we're just right at the weight limit for the blade. And this is a whole lot of blade we're swinging. It's a whole lot of blade. This is a wide robot, so why did you go with this stance of robot this time around? I went with a robot this wide of a stance because when you're running an undercutter with a blade this big, you need to have control of this blade. So you can't have a narrow wheelbase. You have to have a wider wheelbase and plus we like to swing through under the robot and it actually comes out and it cuts behind the robot too. So this area here and then 260 degrees in this area are all dead zone, deadly zones. So this thing is this thing's gonna be nigh impossible to push around once that blade gets spinning, huh? Yeah, yeah. And we're hoping uh, that it does. It the spin up time is actually pretty quick. So would you say that Hellfire is the culmination of all of the knowledge that you've accumulated over the years? Hellfire is. Back in the day, I had another robot that was called Final Verdict. It was powered by a 440 twin on nitromethane. It had a four foot F7 blade. It was a great idea, the gas engines, getting them to idle down and not have the, the blade windmill was a big issue. And going to an electric motor like this one that puts out the horsepower that I need is uh, the change that I made. It, it's a bit of a, a little bit different frame design, but it's more stout. And, and I think this is going to work, really work out. This is the magnum opus of everything you've built, seriously. This is how the master does it. <laughs> it's fast little mother. Have you put a tachometer on that? Yeah, 
100. Watching his back. So Rick's got his two robots in Vegas. He's prepping Swamp Thing to fight Saturday and Hellfire to fight Sunday. Now, just like you've seen in some of our other Builder Blog videos, you have to pass rigorous safety exams before they allow you in the box. You have to prove your robot fail safes, you have to pass weight, you have to pass the wire safety, all that stuff. Unfortunately for Rick, there was a problem with Hellfire's radio, and so Swamp Thing actually ended up doing both the Saturday and the Sunday fights. Woo! How ready are you, Greg? I'm so ready. So ready. Everybody ready? So hype, so hype. Yeah, so the, the weapon, uh, you're about 40% more power than we had in uh, World Championship 7. Uh, we've done a lot of work to try to work on uh, reliability to keep the weapon spinning after it hits. We think we're going to be able to do a lot more damage, get more pop when we get contact. And then we're really trying to focus on winning that ground game, right? So getting up underneath people. We've got some spatulas on the robot, our, our little secret sauce there. And uh, we hope to... Uh, Get it underneath the uh, swamp thing and see what happens. All Let's right. do it on the other right. Let's hear his switch back to Conan today. This mod has never actually fought in battle launch, though its captain and creator was instrumental in the creation of one of the world's greatest bots, Tombstone. Rich Rux is a retired mechanical engineer from Placerville, California, a town that was right in the center of the 1850s gold rush. So let's hope they strike gold tonight. So here is Rich with his bot, Swamp Thing! Tell us a little bit more about the robot and how you're feeling about being back in the battle box. Well, 
I designed the MEO 708 modified motor for uh, two stone, and we're running the same motor in Swamp Thing. It's got a, uh, a uh, asymmetrical tooth powered by the MEO 708 modified. It's basically in the tank. It's got half inch armor wedge with uh, 4130 chromoly uh, tubing frame. And it's also running uh, black, uh, black Max Motors tank, so it's got uh, a lot of uh, speed. It's, it's about a 21 mile an hour roll up, and we've turned it back a little bit for this show. You want to make it controllable? It's time to fight! So it's time to fight! And we're Now, as I mentioned earlier in the episode, uh, the teams are not allowed to record and post their own fights. If you'd like to see this match, you actually have to go to Facebook and become a BattleBot supporter on the BattleBot page. They post the entire match there as if it was a match from the TV show. And if you'd like to see the end of this round, you have to go there to watch it. Thing right there. Wow. Go get him! Yeah! You think the slot machine still has a chance? 